why would you want to just present something like this when you can totally present it in 3D space? This is going to be a review. My name is Shut up! Just like all things that are animated related, are uh, animated related. There are multiple routes to come to one destination. When I started to learn how to use the camera, almost 70% of my animation um, included using the camera tool. So the first thing you need to do is obviously right click, go on to new and select the camera tool. What this is, it adds a separate layer on your timeline called the camera layer pretty self-explanatory. Now you don't need to worry about the settings on the camera. You can just, you know, go with the default if you're starting out because you're not going to be using them anyway. If you're just learning this um, to hit OK and that's going to add a camera layer. The main thing you need to know about the camera layer is that it affects only 3D layers underneath the camera layer. So in order to enable 3D on, on your layers, you need to go and check the, the box like icon that appears um, uh, next the blur motion blur tool. So once you enable it immediately you will see that instead of having one rotation parameter you now have three which is the X rotation, the Y rotation and the Z rotation. The Z rotation, the Z rotation, the Z rotation, the Z, the Z rotation or oh, the Z rotation. Oh god I can't make up my mind. Now before we get in to the actual animation of the movement there are three tools that you know, the camera gives you or gives the user to manipulate the camera, which is the orbit tool. So what the orbit tool does, it lets you orbit whatever image or whatever you have in the space to rotate and orbit around it. So then you have the track and XY, which, you know, is exactly what it is. If you want to move uh, your camera on the XY plane, which is usually left, right, top, bottom, if you want to move it along that um, along those axes or axi axes um, you use the track X and Y and if you want to zoom in and zoom out that is when you're moving in the Z when you're moving in the Z when you're moving the Z direction right so that's what the track um, Z does now to access these uh, tools you can either right click and hold on the camera icon on the top left and wait for the drop down to show all the options that you have or you can just hit C on your keyboard to toggle in between all of these um, options, which is convenient. Like I always use the keyboard shortcut because it makes things faster and it's probably a good idea for you guys to learn that as well or get into a habit of using keyboard shortcuts. <laughs> now that all the prep is done, you can start animating the movement. Now before I start, I always add keyframes in the point of interest, uh, the orientation and the position. Um, because once you start moving the camera around using those three tools, th those are the three main parameters that get changed around. And it's easier for us to enable keyframes and all of it so that we don't have to, you know, finish an entire session of animating the movement and then figure later figuring out that, you know, one of the um, uh, parameters weren't actually locked in. So hit keyframes on those three and then scrub forward um, in the timeline to where the movement changes direction first. So in this example, it moves the top left um, before it you know, changes direction and moves you know, towards the bottom. Tap forward a bit, use the orbit tool, the X track X, Y and the Z tool to focus on the point that you want to focus. And then automatically you'll see keyframes being formed at the bottom. Scrub forward again to where you want the direction of the movement to change. And then again, orient the camera or use the three tools and then you know move it accordingly so once you scrub through the timeline and put keyframes um, in positions where you want the direction of movement to change and that's pretty much it and you're done with the entire movement now if you want to speed up or slow down the movement without affecting or or without affecting the time in between you can select all the keyframes hold alt down and drag the last set of keyframes back and forth and then you will see that it's going to stretch or compress um you know the time duration of the keyframes and it won't affect the timing in between so that's a good thing uh, to keep in mind if you want to speed it up or slow it down that's the best way to do it as opposed to selecting keyframes individually and stretching it uh, but of course, with this method, you won't be able to change the time ratio in between. You'll just be able to stretch everything uniformly. Now, let me show you how I would do this without the camera tool and just use the rotation keyframes. 
which is going to be a nightmare. As you can see, I have to add so many keyframes and I have to make sure that I uh, add keyframes to all rotation axis, to the scale, to the position. So once you start having all those keyframes, when you want to go back and change something, it's going to be so cumbersome because there's so many keyframes that you need to keep in mind when you're changing things around. So it is possible, you can do it with other camera tool, but it literally could cut down your editing time in half. So guys, like and subscribe if you learned something and if you found this useful, go and check out my other tutorials. I have two other animation tutorials and you know, I'll add the playlist somewhere. That's pretty much it, I guess.